Upon creating your document, your interface may have looked quite different than mine because you, especially if it was your first time opening InDesign, you likely have it set to the defaults, of course. And I've got mine set up to what I suspect yours may look like, but if it doesn't, that's okay. We're going to be talking about the workspace for a bit. Now, to learn InDesign, one of the most important things is to maintain our control of the program rather than let it take control of us. And the way it does that is through how we navigate the program, how we move around our document, how we move around through the interface and so on. So I'm going to talk about that a bit. And first of all, we want to talk about our workspace. So right now, like I said, this is what I suspect your workspace may look like by default. And I'm going to show you what I typically work in. And I advise that any new users work in this as well. It's the, the workspace is one where you want to see as much information about what you're working on as possible and you want it readily available. So we're going to go right up here to where it says essentials or dependent on how you opened yours or the version you're using or if you are a previous user and so on, you may be seeing a different one and it may be any one of these. What we're going to work with or what I'm going to suggest you work with is Essentials Classic. Now this is called the workspace setting and you can see that there's several that we can work with. Um, if you are working very much with strict uh, typographic content, you can use the typographic typography one, which will bring up really all of the typography tools. Um, and you can do digital, you can do strictly for book, which, um, you know, some of you as you become more advanced with this into next term, you may want to use the book uh, setting, but I don't even do that and I work on a lot of books. So um, Essentials Classic, I like this because it really shows me everything I want to see when I want to see it, but for myself, because I'm a user since the inception of InDesign, um, it's just very familiar. But I do find that new users, it's the best one to use. Now, if you do create a workspace, you know, moving your windows certain places and um, having specific windows open and so on, the you can choose new workspace and actually save. You can create your own custom workspace. You can title it and then if you're changing workspaces and then you want to go back to that specific customized one that you always prefer, this is a great way to do it. So getting things set up as you work, you know, maybe a couple of weeks into working with this program, you find that you always have specific windows in a specific place, then you can go and you can save that workspace. I don't do that. I used to do that. Now I just find I work on so many varied things. I move the windows around as I need to. In any case, let's go to Essentials Classic. Now, I'm not having, I don't have any windows open right now. I closed all them. But when I work, my windows are typically over here on the left. And I try to keep them tidy and out of my workspace, of course. And as you get working with this, sometimes you have windows all over and um, that's not a bad sign. It's a sign that you're being productive and things are happening. But I always encourage trying to keep a tidy screen environment so that you can focus on the work and you will develop a um, familiarity and a comfort zone for where you have those windows and those specific tools. And that'll just come through use. But specifically what I like about the Essentials Classic setup is the ribbon across the top that has the tools specific to whatever we're working on. Right now we don't have anything selected. We can see a few things happening, such as in the ruler, it's following where our mouse is on the, the ruler to the left and the ruler along the top. And we'll also see in the X and Y axis up here, when we move, it's telling us where our mouse is, our cursor is on the X and Y. So once we get some type in there and we get pictures and shapes and so on, we start seeing in the information header up here what it's all referring to. And that becomes very useful. 
I will open up some windows a bit in a bit and um, what I typically like to focus on first is some basics of navigation and navigation is how we move ourselves about this program when you're working with any program especially in design when you can what you want to avoid is using the scroll bars doing this and moving that becomes a, an extremely rigid way of working that would be like an artist um, moving the easel and not moving the brush so we don't want to work that way so there's a way that we can avoid doing that as well the other thing we want to avoid is zooming in and out using the tools so going over here to the zoom tool using that to click and zoom in and out and the little things like that make this program extremely annoying to work with so we avoid that now the first thing we're going to do and this is something that as a user of InDesign you really do have to uh, become accustomed to and develop these habits we're gonna with one hand on the mouse of course we're gonna have one hand on the lower left of the keyboard now I always recommend that if you are using a laptop which I imagine most of you are if you can get yourself a mouse an actual mouse whether it's a USB or a Bluetooth it will make this so much easier for you it really does free up that motion and you're not confined because as we work we really do like to have some motion with the mouse and it's not just for InDesign in fact InDesign you can be okay if you're you're not needing too much motion but once you get into Photoshop and even Illustrator that's when having a freed mouse when you're working with a laptop is uh, very helpful and just makes it um, far more simple so I have my my hand my right hand on the mouse and I'm going to hold the space bar down with my left hand and you should see your cursor turn into a hand and what I'm doing is clicking and dragging to move that now when we're zoomed in on something or we're just trying to narrow in on an aspect of our layout we would be doing this we wouldn't be going here down to the scroll bars and just trying to target that this way you can just click your space bar click your mouse and drag and you start moving things around it becomes a much more um, fluid way of working as if you're drawing on a piece of paper with a pencil and you just quickly move the paper and you keep drawing rather than moving the entire desk to move the paper over okay so that is it's it's such a small thing holding the space bar and clicking the mouse but as you get working it becomes I would say the most useful aspect of navigation within design second is zooming in and out and this again is where if you click on the zoom tool and you just click or you click and drag yes you can zoom in on something however if you want to zoom out you have to click the option key and and do it the same way we don't want to work that way we don't want to have to grab a tool to zoom in and out and especially if we're already using a tool we don't want to have to go get a zoom tool now if you tried any of that and now you can't get your page back to the regular view do command zero if you're on a PC that would be control zero and command zero resets your page to the standard view okay and that is part of navigation that um, I'll mention again command zero so to zoom in and out again hold the space bar and then click command or control so space command I like to call it and space command zoom is a good way to remember it kind of a little um, just a little term that for new users may help them remember and when you do space command you get your uh, magnifying glass and you can click and drag you can just click I'll do command zero and then if you want to click and drag do command zero and then click 
and zoom out, you're going to add option to that. So space command option and click or click and drag and command zero to bring it back. So those take getting used to. As you get used to working with this program and the other Adobe programs, you'll find your hand is always on the mouse and your hand is always on the lower corner of the keyboard. And it really is, at first, uh, you know, I understand it's kind of annoying. You're looking down at the keyboard, you're trying to see where your fingers are and what keys you're on, but it doesn't take long before you don't even have to look and you just know which keys you're on. So space command to zoom in, space command option or alt if you're on a PC, that would be space control alt to zoom out and then command zero to reset the page. So those along with moving the page with your space bar and knowing command zero and being able to focus in on a specific item of your page is extremely useful and it maintains the fluidity of use with this program. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the cursor that we're using the actual tool that we default to. When you're using these programs, you really are using a series of tools. Many of these you will never use, but I would say probably about six of them you'll use regularly. Either way, when you go to get a tool, and let's say you use the type tool, and you make a type frame, you want to, of course, default back to a tool that's safe. If you just keep working with the type frame and then you go to move your page, for example, accidentally and you like, oh, you forgot to press the space bar, you just drew a type frame. And that's fine. Maybe you'll remember to go delete it or maybe you didn't even see it happen. That's one of the things with um, InDesign is that you can do a lot so detailed that you may do things you didn't even notice it happened. So in order to avoid that, whenever you've used a tool, we used the text tool there, default back, make it a habit to default back to your main cursor. I refer to this as the main cursor when I'm working directly with students, but it's actually called the selection tool. And if I hover over it, it'll say selection tool. And what that is, is basically it allows a basic selection. It allows me to just grab an object or a group of objects. But as far as, and we'll talk about that in the future, but as far as navigation goes, it is something that you really want to default back to. And you'll see me do it a lot when I'm working. I'll draw something, for example, if I draw a box, and then I go to my selection tool by habit, and then I click off to deselect everything. So I'm not, I know I'm not going to inadvertently do anything I don't want to be doing. So I'm just going to select these and clear them off. And I actually, I'm so into the habit of doing that, that even though I can see that it's selected and I know I have that cursor, I often go up there and just click on it anyway. That's how much of a habit it is for me. And I learned the hard way. That's, that's just how it typically goes. I learned that um, I made an error and I had another tool and I left something in a document that I didn't see myself actually create and it got printed and it just became habit for me to let go of everything so that I don't make an error in my document and that was going to the main selection tool. So I really encourage you to make that habit. We'll talk about this cursor, the direct select, uh, down the road. Now, another aspect of navigation is the rulers. The rulers, of course, you can see zero and zero. This is called zeroing in on the corner. They start at our document's edge. And we use these when, um, of course, we're trying to set things accurately and have an adequate um, view of spacing on our document and so on. But you can remove those by pressing Command R or Control R if you're on the PC, if you don't want them or you don't need them. But one thing that they do have and give us access to is guides. Now, if I click on the ruler, I can pull down a guide. 
and that guide goes page wide or sorry screen wide when I pull it down off of the page so I'm grabbing a guide pulling it down off of the page and it goes across what's called the pasteboard that be can become very useful especially if you have a spread of two pages and you pull it down outside of the pages it will cross the whole spread now if you pull it down over just the page it will remain confined to your page now you're going to notice if I click this or roll over it this is an object I can move but typically when we make guides we want to lock them we want to keep them in place so you would go to view and grids and guides and lock guides and of course if you had many guides and you just wanted to get rid of all of them you could delete all of the guides on the spread on and on the spread means on the the page or the pages that you currently have in view you would delete all guides and if you did have your guides locked and you wanted to remove just one then you would go again to the lock guides unlock it and click on the guide that you want to remove so they're all unlocked so I can click, uh, select them and delete them and finally with navigation and we will see a lot of aspects of navigation as we go um, and you will develop your own style of working of course too however one fantastic one that we all know from all of our programs but in these programs becomes it takes on a different level of usability is command Z um, whenever you're working in these programs I really do encourage you to play around click on things see what they do see what's gonna happen and you'll see so much that you can check and try that undo becomes the great you know the usable key command for um, undoing the play that we've done and maybe we don't like what happened um, so command Z and you'll have multiple uh, undos in these programs and then command shift Z will redo and that's how you can get back so command Z and command shift Z or on the PC of course control Z and control shift Z to redo